Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Lajit Horton. I am a physical therapist who specializes um, in working with individuals with Parkinson's disease. Um, I own my own practice, Engage, here in Syracuse. Um, and I am just so looking forward um, to this four week series so we can be helping you stay um, safer at home and decrease your risk for falls. And, and I'm uh, Lindsay Kratzer, um, the owner and founder of Reflections Management and Care. We provide care management services throughout all of Onondaga County and surrounding counties. And we help folks um, through um, the, the process, through life <laughs> with a lot of different aspects. Um, and I'm here with Liz to talk about the prevention of falls and um, the resources that are available out there um, for everyone. Good, I need that. That's why we're here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. This is, a, this is our first time here. Well, welcome. Yes. All right, I am gonna share my screen. Okay. All right, so um, you know, throughout our talk, we're gonna be talking about falls, why do people have falls, and then what we can be doing to help prevent falls. So some safety uh, modifications at home, um, different devices, um, we'll even talk about footwear um, and exercise, of course. And if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to, to stop, at an, stop us at any time. Um, so falls, it can happen to anyone. About one third of adults mm -hmm. over the age of 65 have a fall each year. And 87% of all fractures in adults are due to falls. Well, this is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Many falls don't result in an injury, um, which is why my definition of a fall is anytime you end up on a lower surface and you didn't mean to, um, mm -hmm. I consider that a fall. So that could be you, you land in a chair and you didn't mean to be there. You land in your bed and you didn't mean to be there um, because this is so important information for us to know because there are things that we can be doing to help prevent falls. And then 47% of individuals who have a fall can't get up from the floor without assistance. Um, so for those of you who do big class with me, you know Wednesdays, I love getting down onto the floor. A big reason why is so that we were practicing getting down to the floor and getting up because it is an important skill that I think if you don't use it, you lose it. Exactly. Okay. So specifically for Parkinson's, um, there was a study that looked at 22 different studies and they found that 60% uh, of individuals with Parkinson's had at least one fall and 39% of the group had repeated falls. Um, and that within a year that ranged from having four falls a year all the way up to about 67 falls a year. Um, so that is one of our big things that we want to be working on is helping prevent falls. So some things that um, play a role in falls is actually having a history of falls. So if you have one fall, you're more likely to have another fall. Um, the increased time that you've had Parkinson's um, and you know, increased issues with, um, with movement, and that can be slowness of movement. It can be, um, it can be extra movement. Um, treatment with um, dopamine agonist has been um, associated. Um, changes in thinking, um, having a fear of falling. Um, so this is something that I often will go over with people is how confident they feel about their balance and um, how they think their risk for falls is, um, freezing of gait or walking, um, and just reduced physical activity. So we want to keep you moving and grooving. 
And another study looked at reasons for falls and they broke down the reasons um, into two categories, intrinsic, um, which was uh, factors that are related to, um, to a patient or a person's health conditions and extrinsic, meaning environmental factors like um, home um, setup, throw rugs, things like that. And they found that, um, uh, that 70 percent of individuals with Parkinson's um, falls were related to intrinsic um, rather than extrinsic, meaning that it had more to do with um, things that were happening inside your body versus how your home was set up. And the biggest thing that they found is taking um, a medication um, group called benzodiazepines really increased um, the risk for falls. And I just included um, some medications that are in that, um, in that group. And we bring that up because it's really important to understand your medications and um, how that can impact how you're moving. Um, and always a good conversation to have with your providers, um, especially if you see one of these medications on your medication list. So this sounds pretty serious. I know we we started off pretty, pretty heavy, but the great part about this is, can you do anything about it? The answer is yes. So these are really great questions to ask yourself. Have you had a fall or are you worried about falling? Have you noticed any changes in your balance? And I typically use a window of three to six months, um, you know, thinking about how you were moving in the fall compared to how you're moving now. Or I'll even think about it in terms of holidays. Um, have you noticed a change in your memory or thinking? Are there any specific activities or situations that you're finding challenging? And this could be related to your balance. It could be related to freezing. Um, you may you know, be noticing that you are freezing or having um, smaller movements in specific areas. And that's really great to note. Um, have you done physical, occupational, or speech therapy recently? So I'm a big, big proponent of uh, the dentist model um, for therapy in individuals with Parkinson's that you are coming to do therapy, doing a checkup with us and making sure that there's nothing that we need to fine tune. And then you go off, you live your life, and then you come back to see us in six months. So we make sure that we're staying on top of everything. And then what is your current exercise program? And could it be better? Are we really doing focused exercises that we know are beneficial for individuals with Parkinson's? So what are the first steps? So getting tested, and that's for hearing, for vision, um, for foot care and sensation, and then for bone density and bone health. So those are all great things to be talking to your providers about and getting um, regular assessments. Going back to that list of questions that you were asking yourself. So note things that you're finding challenging, like write them down and then, you know, come and see a physical therapist to really problem solve. Home modifications is another great alternative. So working on making your home safer. And we're going to go through some specific um, examples on how you can do that and then begin or improve your exercise program so that it's really tailored to you and your specific needs. So it's so important to keep track if you are having falls, what is happening um, at that time? Is it a certain time of day? <coughs> is it related to maybe your medication? Um, oftentimes, um, falls can either happen during an off time or an on time, maybe if you have extra movement. 
Are you dealing with lightheadedness? So maybe changes in blood pressure when you are changing positions. Do you have falls when you're feeling rushed or when you're distracted trying to do two things at once? Are there certain areas, maybe in your home, that you're noticing that you're having difficulty with your balance? Or maybe specific situations like getting in and out of the car. So all of that information is so helpful because then um, you, things can be really tailored to help you uh, keep your balance and prevent a fall. So talking about home modification. So some basic things that you can do are um, taking note of your whole, whole home and looking to see if there are obstacles in your common pathways. And this can be both inside and outside your home. Um, so looking at common pathways, say from your bedroom to the bathroom or your kitchen to the living room, is it a pretty straight you know, forward path, or do you have to maneuver around things? And the same thing for when you're coming out of your house to say, get to your car. Is it a pretty straightforward path or are you having to maneuver around things? Um, Cause that is um, a good starting place. Making sure that your staircases um, have handrails and um, grab bars in the bathroom making sure that areas in your home are well lit, storing clothing and dishes and food and pretty much anything you need in fairly easy to reach places. I want to add to that, Liz, um, you know, as a care manager, when I go into homes, um, usually storing clothing, dishes, food and necessities is the last to be moved. It's something that's so simple uh, and can most definitely, um, you know, moving the dishes from an upper cabinet, you know, down to a lower cabinet um, and placement uh, with food in the fridge. Um, if you have a freezer or, you know, however your refrigerator freezer combo um, is, um, sometimes those small, those small um, things that we tend to forget about make a huge difference. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And that's something always to, you know, just keep in mind of where are the common areas that you are reaching, you know, to, to get your, your common belongings. Um, another suggestion is using um, paint or tape um, with a bright color on door sills um, or thresholds to help avoid tripping. And then uh, making sure that you have good footwear. So, and we'll talk more about that. So I was gonna have us pause here and see if anyone has any questions so far. I do, yeah. Um, I was wondering about if there's a podiatrist you recommend for foot care, is there anybody who specializes in people with Parkinson's or anything like that that you're aware of? That is an excellent question. Lindsay, do you know of anyone? Um, I know that there is, um, right off of Morgan Road, um, a podiatrist um, in Liverpool that comes highly recommended, Dr. Um, D'Amico. Okay. Um, very great professional um, and focuses on all aspects, you know, um, all diseases, but um, most definitely he has come most recommended throughout I'm my career. Right. Dr. Yep, it's a uh, capital D apostrophe A M I C O. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You're the welcome. The difference between a podiatrist and a foot surgeon. So, typically, so t I mean, the foot surgeon, I mean, specializes in um, the feet, um, but a lot of times they distinguish. Uh, some do both. Um, some might do surgery as well, but some will just focus on clipping the nails, the nail health, where um, a referral might go to like a foot surgeon. The foot, um, you know, they, again, there's different aspects within the foot um, that they might be looking at as a surgeon. Yes, for example, I may need orthotics for my shoes, for pronation issues. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if a podiatrist would be a better 
place or an orthopedic doctor that specializes in feet would be a better option? That's a really good question. Um, and, you know, I, I would, most of referrals um, come from, uh, with clients of mine from podiatrists. Um, but I have seen them come from orthopedic, especially if there's other parts of the body, knees, mm -hmm. hips, things like that, that you're, um, you know, focusing on or may, might have tr trouble with. Okay. Does this Dr. Amico also do arthritics? Um, he has, yes. Yep. He'll okay. make a recommendation, um, you know, uh, for to go someplace um, to be specifically fitted for shoes um, or orthotics. Um, but yes, he does. He will make those recommendations. Thank you. You're welcome. One other question, uh, Liz, for you. Uh, if you have trouble getting on the floor and getting back up, does that have any relationship with falls? Um, so not that I am aware of that there's a direct relationship between having difficulty doing that, mm -hmm. but where it does play a role is if you do have a fall, it makes it more challenging for you to be able to get up. And mm -hmm. so I, that's one reason why um, in, in big class, we practice it. And then, um, you know, when I see someone for one-on-one -on -one therapy, that's always something that we're taking a look at and problem solving. How can we make that easier to do? Okay. Cause my goal is if you do have a fall that you are able to get up off the floor by yourself and you have that independence. I know Patrick uh, teaches us in the class on you know, the gym at the gym, but I just didn't know if that had any relationship to preventing falls or helping with a fall. Well, I think that the more you are able to move um, and keep your balance, you know, the mm -hmm. better your balance is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Liz, mm -hmm. I've had falls um, and I have no idea what causes them, why I'm, I don't feel dizzy, my blood pressure is perfect. I don't, is it the Parkinson's that would do this to me? Just do this sporadic, undefined or unplaced falls where I just all of a sudden I fall over and I'm not doing anything. I'm not talking out in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. so, I just don't, I don't know how I can be better if I don't know what's causing it. Yeah, I can understand how frustrating that is. And that's where, you know, really going into those questions, those guided questions about um, what exactly is happening when you're losing your balance. And so Kathy, we'll use your example, you know, specifically in the kitchen. Um, it, you know, diving into it, about lighting. Um, so sometimes lighting can play a role in, um, in increasing your risk for falls or time of day, which can be related to your medications, either at an on time or an off time of your medications. Or is it happening with maybe a specific activity that you're in the kitchen and let's say you're at the sink and you, you know, you notice that you uh, have falls when you have to turn to get to the refrigerator. Or maybe it's that you are leaving the kitchen and are um, going into a different room that may have different flooring, um, which can be a trigger for freezing. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, mm -hmm. I think I, I, Sometimes it's late at night, well, up late, and, and that might be, but sometimes it's just no time related. It's... I, and I know how frustrating this can be. So a lot of times what I'll have individuals do is um, actually use like a voice, uh, if you have a smartphone, um, using like a voice text. Um, or just jotting down some notes because um, that's all helpful information because you may not see 
a pattern. Um, but if you bring that information to say a session with your physical therapist, okay. you know, we can, we can sit down and take a look at it and say like, gosh, like out of, you know, you had, let's say five falls in the last two weeks. Like, let's take a look to see, and maybe looking at, at that information, we're able to pull out like a pattern that, that you may not have noticed because right. you're living your life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely can understand how frustrating that is feeling like you're losing your balance and it's hard to pinpoint, um, you know, a specific um, event or trigger. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did notice that um, I seem to be falling less now that I'm exercising more. Yay! <laughs> Yay, Kathy, I love that. Yeah. I love Thank you, that. Liz. Yeah, moving your body really helps you, um, you know, stay mobile. Yeah, and I catch myself a lot. You know, I, I would fall normally more if I wasn't exercising and practicing not falling. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's where that having a specific exercise program that's really tailored to your needs is so important because everyone you know, has specific reasons that they may lose their balance or specific things that, um, that they need to focus on. And that's why having um, you know, a really tailored exercise program um, can be really beneficial. Kathy, so how would you go about doing that? <laughs> what? So I'm gonna put in another plug for coming to, to see me for physical therapy or occupational therapy, or if you're working on speech, speech therapy, because all of us have um, a lot of tools and tricks um, to help get you a good, well-rounded program. Um, and so a lot of times what we'll do is come up with some, you know, a couple exercises that are really targeted um, to what you need to work on. And then we have you, you know, connected to boxing with empower or you're coming to my big class um or you're doing you know voice exercises um so that way you're getting that well-rounded um exercise experience along with some really targeted exercises that are going to help you and and i just uh with kathy um kathy it's great that you're catching yourself um you know it's good to notice why and how are you catching yourself? Is, is it a feeling of a pain? Uh, do you get dizzy? Um, those types of things, it's really important um, to recognize, um, you know, when you, when you catch yourself, um, you know, how, how did you prevent that from happening? Well, I think, I think it happens it. because I prepared, not kind of, I'm not prepared to fall, but the, but many times I, I do catch myself, I'm starting to fall and I catch myself because I practice it. Yeah, right, and that's very helpful too. Um, that, that, I mean, again, we're stressing all of that, but you know, sometimes people get feelings like, oof, um, you know, I turn my head this way or this far, um, you get dizzy and you know, you fall, but um, that's good. But sometimes I move too fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm in too much of a hurry. Gotta stop that. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? Not a question, Liz, but a comment. Yeah. Um, this Dr. D'Amico, I don't know if it's the same one, but uh, Ryan D'Amico is over in uh, by the Kenny Drugs in Manlius Center Road. Uh, Ryan D'Amico, and I went to him. And he does orthotics. I don't know if he specializes in Parkinson's per se, but he does do orthotics with a, uh, you stand on a thing and it, it shows you where you need any, they fit them for you. And it's very nice, uh, very good uh, practice. Thank you for that. I believe if I'm not mistaken, that's actually, um, Ryan is uh, his uh -huh. son. Okay, yep. yeah, I didn't know. Um, and for everybody, I did put the information for Dr. D'Amico in Liverpool um, in the chat. 
if you wanted the information. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, going back to the uh, podiatrist, the wife and I have been seeing Dr. Brian Popovicki in Liverpool. And we've been seeing him for years. And he is he's so attentive to taking care of everything. But he's done operations yeah. on my wife's foot. Something. And we've I'm also had, uh, he takes care of, he made inserts for the wife's uh, shoes. He recommends certain shoes. And he also, if you bring it, we brought in like 10 pair of her shoes and he went through them all and showed us which ones were good and which ones are bad and why. So he's uh, uh, excellent at dealing with the patients and handling that. That's, uh... That's very helpful. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? I have one. Um, I'm two years into this and um, I find that I sometimes when I go to take a step, my, he my heel feels like jello and it slides. And I wonder, is it the Parkinson's or, you know, I'm not usually on wet ground when it happens. It's like in my garage, in my concrete. And it's very disturbing, but I didn't know if that's part of the Parkinson's or if it's something else. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's really um, a great insight that you um, have you know, been focused in on that. You know exactly where it's happening. Um, you know, that's where like coming and doing a balance assessment can be really helpful. Um, so in, you know, physical therapy, um, when I meet someone, and especially if we're focused on balance, we look at um, uh, quite a few different areas of balance. Um, so we look at how do you, does your balance react um, when you anticipate that you're going to lose your balance um, or that you're going to anticipate that you have to you know, move around an object. Um, we take a look at what happens to your balance when you don't anticipate, you have to react. Um, uh, and it can be a change in surface or um, needing to take a step to catch yourself. And then taking a look at your balance when you're doing different things with walking. Um, and balance incorporates so many different senses. Um, and so there are quite a few different reasons why um, you could be experiencing that. And so it's really fine tuning and, um, and getting down to, um, to the reason why that's happening. Any other questions? These are really great questions. I hope you all keep, keep them coming. Uh, one other thing I'd like to comment on that you were talking about things to do around the house. Uh, of course, having railings on all the stairways. Uh, we have a, we've been in this house over 55 years. So we have a 90 degree stairway that, to go upstairs. And I have the railings on both sides of the stairs all the way up. So going up and down the stairs makes it so much easier because you can actually have the grip to hold on. But um, uh, my, the, the, I guess what we were really kind of hoping for today and that you've covered a lot of stuff is about faults is one thing and uh how to avoid that you know and there's we have our grab bars where we need them i even made a step stool for my wife to get out of bed because she couldn't reach the bed and uh made one that kind of goes underneath there and, and then i have uh, another grab bar on the sidewall of the bedroom so she can pull herself up and you know and uh so things work out 
and a lot, a lot of this stuff you're covering is things we've already done, but they're so important that they, they make a world of difference. Definitely, definitely. And I'm going to have you stay tuned because next week we're going to go more in depth into um, modifications and suggestions for, you know, different rooms in your house. So we'll go room by room and, and talk about some things that you can be um, focused on um, at home. So come back next week. That's our plug for this being a four week series. <laughs> Liz, yeah. Um, the smart footwear, other than sneakers, what is there? So um, my feeling about it is if you can have um, a shoe that is well fitting, that has a back to it, mm -hmm. um, that, that your foot doesn't have to work really hard to keep your shoe on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. Yeah. So, um, and we, we have a couple of examples when we get there. Um, but like okay. thinking about different footwear, um, uh, like flip-flops, <laughs> never much as, much as flip-flops are great, they're really hard um, for, you know, our toes have to work really hard to keep our shoes on. And so when you're already dealing with balance issues, we don't need your feet working any harder. Right. Um, you know, the other big thing is um, slippers that your feet can just slide into um, that don't have a back. Because again, your foot has to work a little bit harder to keep your slipper on. Mm -hmm. yeah, my, my dad uh, needs uh, shoes without uh, heels in them so he can slip them on because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just too hard and time consuming to get the shoe on mm -hmm. and, and uh, sometimes I, I've seen where he I'd be moving him in his wheelchair and the shoes will just the shoe will just fall off mm -hmm. but I don't I don't know what other option there could be there are physics yeah that's it yeah, that was going to be the brand that I, um, actually we have a picture of, um, is there is a slip on, um, sneaker and shoe that it was made specifically for individuals with Parkinson's. Uh, that's called what? Um, what was the question? I'm sorry. So what, what is that called? Kizik, K-I-Z-I-K. Kizik. Z-I-K. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. And I know that Nike also, I think it was last year, came up with a like an adaptive sneaker um, that was easier to slide in and out of too. But I've worked with several people who have the Kizik um, sneakers and really like them. I have a pair of Kizik's and they're very good. You can put them on, you don't have to bend down and put them on, slide them on your feet. The back collapses. Oh, and it pops back up again. Mm -hmm. Shoehorn back in business. Yeah, I got a long one. You don't need a shoehorn. That's a good thing. And we also use the elastic shoelaces. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to tie them at all. They release and grab with a little button. Those are much nicer for. For me, anyways, <laughs> it's a lot easier. A shoehorn, yes, and long and short. And uh, you got to have the long shoehorn. My body's not flexible, so I have to dig up some aids to help me with some of this stuff. And I think that that's a really great point about having tools to you know keep you independent. Um, is uh, that is a wonderful. Um, sorry, um, thing that occupational therapy um, really focuses on is coming up with tips and tricks to keep you independent and, um, and uh, using tools. It's going to impact the market through those stories and more. Patrick also <laughs> mentioned um, Ziba uh, footwear. Um, mm -hmm. So we did put that information in the chat if um, you are looking for the names. 
Thank you. Any other questions? These are really great questions. Okay, uh, I have not gotten to the point where Dad is going to get uh, over to uh, engage yet. I'm not sure how we would get transportation and stuff, but I've talked to Dina briefly. And uh, so that's kind of coming up on my list of stuff to do. But right now, when he follows, he follows he, he, more than he ever, more than he tells me. And and he recently, I was there when he told his doctor that he follows about every other day or so. Oh God! And uh, it happens when he's he's uh, trying to go it alone, and he he does not literally have railings on every inch of his house because that's about what he would need. And and so when he, he's like pushing his wheelchair, but when he tips back, he just pull sometimes pulls the wheelchair down onto the floor with him. And and really kind mm -hmm. of what, what he needs is something like like a like an infant would use when learning to walk, where they're suspended down with a bungee cord from a bar or something, and they're able to move around, but they cannot fall. And I don't know if there's anything like that for adults, but that's that's I, I just feel like he just needs to be suspended from the ceiling at all times. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Yeah, so there's definitely some strategies um, that that we can play around with in terms of the you know devices individuals are using um, to help them be more stable. Um, it can be you know using um, uh, if they're use, if someone's using a walker, adding some weight to a walker so it slows you down, or um, if someone's dealing with freezing, um, using a light um, that travels with you. So it gives you a cue to, to increase your step length. So your steps aren't so small. And so um, a lot of that is, is taking a look at how someone's moving and hearing how they may be losing their balance at home and, and working on um, some modifications to what they're already using because it sounds like Bob your dad is it sounds like he's falling backwards so yeah. uh, mm. so you know just thinking probably we would work on strategies to get him to shift forwards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, the, the training that you would do it you, you were saying you, you would you would coach them on something, then they come back the next week and tell you how they're doing. Is that kind of how the therapy works? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do a lot of problem solving. So I always joke that that physical therapy here at Engage is very different than most other physical therapy. So we do a lot of problem solving um, exercises that are very dynamic. I'm exercising with you. I get a workout all day. Um, and a lot of what we do is really, um, is getting down to like the nitty gritty, um, where are you having the biggest issue and then what tools or tricks can we, um, we pull in to see if we can make something easier or make, or help you be more independent. Any other questions? These are really great questions. If we are at a good pause break, I think we'll do our movement break, if that sounds good for everyone. Sure. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Yay, okay. All right, and then I'm just gonna spotlight my video. Okay, and so for those of you who do balance class, a lot of what we're going to do today is our warm up and balance class. So if you'd like, I'm going to have you all get standing up. Let's try. Today we're going to start with the basics of really getting grounded through our feet. 
a lot of times when individuals have balance issues, our brain and our feet are not talking. You're on opposite pages. And so this is very often where I start is in standing, um, having us just check in with where our weight is in our feet. And that can be a question you ask yourself. Am I back on my heels? Am I towards my toes? Am I more on my right leg? Am I more on my left leg? Because not many of us stay, stand perfectly um, symmetrical in both feet in the middle part of our feet. And um, if you come to big class, I am often talking about our power stance. Um, and so, so often in Parkinson's, when you're standing, it feels really normal to have your feet pretty close together. And so getting into a power stance where your feet are hip distance apart, or maybe even a little bit wider. So as we're standing, I'm going to have you check in with your feet. Are you right in the center now that we've checked in? And so from here, we're going to work on doing some weight shifting. So I'm going to have you come over to one leg and then find center. And now we're going to shift over to the other side and find center. So we'll do that a couple times. So shift Maria. and find center. Shift That's it. find center. We'll do it one more time to each side. Shift and find center. Shift and find center. Okay. So we did side to side. Now we're going to work on forward and back which oftentimes is more challenging to move through that range of motion. So we're going to wait to our toes. When you're doing this, I don't want you to come all the way up onto your, um, onto your toes. You're just weight shifting just so your heel is starting to come up. And then we come, we find center. And we're going to go back. I want, if you have any balance issues, make sure you have a chair to hold on to if you need it. So we're going to weight shift back a little bit just so our toes are starting to, to lift up and then come back to center. So we're going to shift forward, find center, shift back, toes up, find center, forward, heels up, and center, back. And center. You may find that there's one direction that feels a little easier. Maybe it's easier to come forward and going back feels like, oh, I'm going to fall right over. That's really helpful information. So from here, let's put those movements together. So we're going to do some weight shifting through a circle. So we're going to come forward. We're going to shift to the side. We're going to come back towards our heel. We're going to shift to the side. We're going to come forward. So I want you to imagine you're drawing a circle as you're weight shifting. Let's do that a couple times. As you're doing this, you know, checking in with your posture. So sometimes when we're moving right? for our feet, we get really um, hunched down. Um, and so making sure you're stale, staying in your stale, staying Power stance. Yeah, that's it. That's we're shifting through our feet. Back towards me. Right towards me. And now we oh. switch directions. So let's go counterclockwise. Oh. You were going clockwise. Whatever the opposite is. When she says find center, I mean, go back to the middle. As you're doing this, check just like how your circle is. Does it feel pretty me. even? Or do you feel like maybe it's an oval Go your way. or a lopsided circle? Because that's way. helpful information too, because maybe there's a side that's a little bit harder for Instead you to weight shift to. Go. So the sticky foot. Very um, far, just walking, sometimes it's harder to weight shift it. on that side. So that's all really helpful information. Okay, so then let's come back to center and I'm going to have you check in with your feet again. Okay. Were you able to come back?
back to center and are you pretty even between your right and your left foot? Are you pretty even between the front and the back? Okay. All right. So from here, we're going to do we're going to do two more exercises. Um, I'm going to have us work on coming up to our toes. So thinking about weight shifting a little bit bigger and then coming back down with control. So when you're coming down, I want you to imagine there's an egg underneath your heels. You don't want to have scrambled eggs. So we're going to come up towards our toes like a ballerina and then come down slowly with control. If you need a chair or a counter for balance, make sure you have that. So lifting up and then coming down. So we're just taking that weight shift and making it a little bit more dynamic. If you're feeling this is a piece of cake, I got this. So then you can layer on, you can add in an arm movement. So as you're lifting up, lift your arms up and then come down, float your arms down. Lift up, arms up, down, down, arms down. Lift up, arms up, down, arms down. Let's do three more. Lift, arms up, down, arms down. Two more. Lift, arms up, down, arms down. One more. Lift. Arms up, yep. down, arms down. That's good. All right, one more okay. exercise to go. I think um, standing on one leg is such a great test of our balance, a quick and dirty test that you can be checking in every day if you want to. So often we need to get into standing on one leg, whether it's to put on our shoes or put on our pants True. or get our socks on. <clears throat> Um, so if you need a chair for balance, please make sure you have one. So let's work on lifting up. Let's start with your right leg and I'm going to have us lift and let's see how long you can hold it for. But if you need a chair for balance, you need to hold on to something, please make sure you have yeah. something. What's everyone doing? Good so far. Good so far. I love it. All right. Five more seconds on this side. All right. Let's put our foot down. Hey, okay, let's try your left leg now. So we're lifting up. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Trying. <laughs> okay, great. All right, let's put our foot down. Okay, so great job, everyone. <laughs> Okay, let me pull this up. Does anyone have any questions from those exercises? Mm -mm. No, we're gonna keep it easy, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so standing on one leg is a quick check-in, I think um, that you can fit in um, throughout your day. Like if you're brushing your teeth in the morning, you know, just check in quick with your balance, see how it's going. And what we worked on today where you're feeling your feet, and working on weight shifting in different directions is a really great exercise because so often with balance issues, our brain and our feet are just not on the same page. So it's wonderful to get them chatting together. Any question? Yes. Uh, I was wondering, I had no problem standing on two feet and leaning and swaying and all that. One foot I could hardly stand on. Mm -hmm. Any way to get around that or improve it? Practicing. Just practicing. Okay. So practicing it. 
And then, so working on getting your base of support smaller. So when we're working on weight shifting, your feet are apart. So how you can progress that is bringing them closer to clo um, together okay. and then even bringing them into like a staggered stance. Yeah. And yeah. I would just make sure that you have something close by to, to catch your balance if you're feeling a little wobbly. Okay, good. Yeah, but you know, standing um, on one leg, you know, doing it by a kitchen sink is a great, you know, check in for your balance, even if it's just for a second or two. Okay. One or two. I was discouraged I couldn't stand there very more than a couple of seconds. Well, so I think that's a good baseline. So today is a couple seconds, and see if you keep working on it over the next four weeks while you're coming. Um, <laughs> you know, to chat with us, see All where right. we're at in a month. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, question. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you recommend for like total exercise time during a 24 hour period? So that just depends on the type of exercise. So um, I think 30 minutes to 60 minutes of mm -hmm. exercise is really great every day. Okay. Okay. And there's different types of exercise. Um, so there is aerobic exercise where we're working on getting your heart rate up. Um, there is balance exercise, like what we um, just did today. Um, there's exercises to work on strengthening. <laughs> Um, and then there's exercises to work on flexibility. Um, That's funny. I've been, we've been using a set of CDs from the elder gym that we purchased probably 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And they cover exactly the four things you're just talking about. And they're half hour exercising programs. Mm -hmm. Some of them are a little difficult now with the feet and everything, but uh, and that's, that's an excellent program that they run. One of the biggest things that we know about Parkinson's is um, the benefits of that aerobic um, exercise and especially trying to get your heart rate up. Um, so that if, um, if someone's able to do that, that is usually a key part to our exercise plan. I see. Mm -hmm. And That's that can be- know. Mm -hmm. And that can be monitoring your heart rate. It can be monitoring how hard you feel like you're working because um, there is a good correlation between that. And working at a moderate to high intensity, as long as you're, um, you're medically able to, is really beneficial for Parkinson's. And actually in the last week, I go over... Um, some some more specific recommendations on how to build that program. Okay. Liz? Yes. Would you say you have exercises that um, I might do to improve my bone density? So coming to big class, you are doing a lot of exercises that can help improve your bone density or maintain your bone density. So we know that weight bearing activities, um, activities that have some impact. So like yesterday when we were jumping the line, great for bone density. Okay. Because I know um, people with Parkinson's are, have a lower vitamin D count mm -hmm. and that's what's in calcium supplements. Mm -hmm. Those things can be hard on your stomach. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. And actually we, um, I believe it was August last year, did a whole blog series on bone health and Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. So if you, you come to our website, um, I believe it was in August, it was a four week series on bone health. Oh, it was a blog post, Alan. Oh, okay. Yeah. My husband wrote the blog post. That's why I remember. 
I remember. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. all summer. I put it on August, so that way he had all summer to write them. You have a website? I we do. I can put that in the chat. Please. Oh, good. Does your husband write all those blog posts? I thought you got them from some other like place or something. Oh, you were looking at one of the the writers of all of those blog posts. Yeah, yeah. I was going down through them. There was a lot of very relevant topics in there. Yeah, so we write a new blog post every week. Wow, I, I thought you must have like just just got those from some other like a source of some kind. Oh no, we we write them every week, and if there's any new research article that comes out, um, we um, share that um, with a summary, um, so that way you all are staying informed. Well, very nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my husband just wrote the four on bone health. That was all. The ones that come to us in our email? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so I, I have looked at them. You have those, Ellen. Yeah, you have those, but yeah. Our, what's it, Ellen? There's so much stuff. We do, we cover, we try to cover a pretty broad range of, of topics that are, are really meaningful for individuals with Parkinson's. I didn't do the exercises because I, I sat too long. Okay. Well, you're here, Ellen. Give yourself credit for being here. That's great. Yeah, we'll keep working on it. Well, I am just taking a peek at the time and it is almost four o'clock. That was a, such a quick hour. Yes. Yeah, a lot of great questions too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so keep those questions coming because we will be back next Tuesday. You're gonna talk more about footwear? We will be talking about footwear. Next week's focus is gonna be on home safety. So we're gonna be doing um, a breakdown room by room, what you can be doing to help make your home safe. And so if there are specific questions you have, this is a great opportunity walk around your house. So that way we can chat about it. I thought that this was really great because there was a lot of nice dialogue happening. So bring your questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I think we got this recorded. So I'm also hopefully going to put this up on YouTube. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> great. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. See you, Liz, later. See you next week. Liz, Liz, very informative. Liz, can I yeah. just ask anybody? Oh. Anybody whose name is not on their picture, if you could just use the chat and send me your name. No wonder. No, if your iPad, send me your actual name. Yes. Or and your last name would be very helpful. Not you, John. I know you. Am I exactly Ellen? No, good. You're fine, Ellen. I know. Okay, thank you. Sorry, you Pat. Yes. Yeah. Pat, am I okay? Yep, you're okay. Well, <laughs> Barbara. Yeah, I would think so. She still do all get up. I think you know I have to do this. Oh, I think you know Rich. Mm -hmm. We do know Rich. Okay. That was positive. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. So nice to see you, Joanne. Oh, likewise. <laughs> yes. We'll see you next week. Mm hmm. Yep. Get ready for fun. Uh, thank you, Liz. You're welcome, Rom. Take care. You Bye. too. See you next week. Yes. Yep. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Liz. Bye. So nice to see you. We'll see you next week. Look forward to it. Bye, Liz. Thank you.